All right, there's gonna be a lot of times when you need to check if a variable or uh, a key in an array is set. And what I mean by that is, does it actually exist? Does it exist or does it not exist? Now the reason for this is because PHP is so dynamic and people create so many variables with this is sometimes it's hard to tell if something is actually set. So for example, let's say I've, I've got a much more complicated script than this, but I wanna say uh, echo hello name. And I refresh my page, it just says hello. So if I don't ever want this to say just hello, hello, uh, in fact, let's make this a lot more awkward. Hello and welcome. This just says hello and welcome. And that's actually not awkward, but uh, you know, let's make this more awkward. Hello, and this should say hello, Caleb, and welcome, but it doesn't. So now this is awkward because there's obviously two commas in here and two commas should never be side by side. It's weird sentence structure. So how do we check to see if this name exists? Well, first of all, we can set the name. Name is equal to Caleb. Cool, that works, but there's no name set. So what we can do is if is set name, then echo this. Very, very easy. Otherwise, it's not going to echo anything. And we will say else echo welcome guest. And now we have something set in here. Now we can say at any time, just by changing this, changing this uh, name, and by changing this, I mean adding this, name is equal to Caleb. Hello, Caleb, and welcome. So there we go. That is how you check if something is set. But what if we wanted to check if something more comprehensive was set. Uh, let's say, ooh, we want to see if there's a whole array of information set on someone. So uh, we've got an array, you know, let's call this people. We've got an array. And in here, we've got person one, his name is Caleb. And he has an array of information. It's weird talking about myself in the third person, by the way. His age is 28 or so. And his favorite sport is, I don't know, snowboarding. Snowboarding. Make that smaller. And uh, what is his favorite food, right? Food, tacos. Okay, so we've got one person in here. Let's go ahead and duplicate this and make a second person. And a third person. This was Nathan. His favorite food is nachos. With an E, without an E, let's do without an E. 26, uh, his favorite sport, I don't know, actually hockey. It's not hockey, but I find that kind of funny. And let's say Thanos is, I have no idea, we're gonna say he's a thousand. His favorite sport is destroying worlds. And his favorite food is um, probably as guardian people. That's totally inaccurate, but it's funny. Okay, so let's get rid of name Whoop, up here. We'll get rid of name and we'll say if is set people. People is definitely set. That exists. So we can say something in there. But let's say we want to see if a particular person is set. So if is set, Caleb. Okay, so now I need a name in there. Because without it, it still has those awkward commas. So what do we do? We could put people name. There's no name in here. Uh, we could, I mean, easily, very, very easily, just put a name in here. Name is equal to your name. Just something like that. People, Caleb, name. Again, I'm making this smaller. I apologize if this is hard to read. Caleb, people, Caleb, name. People, Caleb, name. So we can, for the most part, assume that if people Caleb is set, that there is a name. But if we're not 100% certain, I mean, we could sort of look like fools. It's like whenever you get an email address and it's like, hi, person, it's like, well, you know my name. Why don't you just put my name in there? It doesn't take that much work. So what we would do in this case, we would double check. We would say, if is set person name, um, people, Caleb, name, then we can say, hello, people, Caleb, name. And there we go. So that all works. But if we got rid of this, and I'll comment this out so it sort of pretends that it doesn't exist. People, Caleb, name does not exist. It's not in here anymore. 
you can see that it's blue, it's the equivalent of not having it in there at all. And, and so it just says, welcome guest. Now what you can also do is you can say, if is not set, remember that not operator, this is important. People, Caleb, name. And that looks like a, a mouthful, but remember, most of that is, is just the array. That's all this is. So if this is not set, we can now go ahead and set this. So we say people, Caleb, name is equal to Caleb Tallinn. And bam, there it is. So we checked if it's not set, and then, oh, all of a sudden it is set. Okay, now we can use it. So that is the premise behind is set. Now the idea is to use this on bigger projects. When there's a lot more files, when there's stuff going on in another file that you don't know how to access yet, or you don't actually know is available. And you'll see this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot with WordPress, because WordPress is a very, very sloppy content management system in the sense that the code is just so terrible. And you'll see this all the time because you don't know what set, you don't know what the scope is, you don't know how things are technically working. And so you always have to check, is something set? Is there a certain setting set? Is something set along the lines? If not, then I can do something. And that's because you don't want to overwrite. So if one person has a plugin um, and it's called, uh, it's called send emails and you create a plugin called send emails, you want to make sure that their variables are not taking place in your code or vice versa. You want to make sure that your code is not overwriting their codes. And so you use things like is set to, to double check that things aren't being overwritten. Now your task for this lesson, what I would like you to do is I would like you to create, you don't have to create a, a massive array, just create a regular variable, call it name, name is equal to Thanos or something. Um, and then Check to see if it exists. If it does exist, awesome. If it does not exist, I want you to make it exist. So use the if not exist. If does not exist, then make it exist. And I'm purposely, I'm deliberately being vague here and a little bit complicated so that you can practice uh, learning how to do these things without full guidance. So every now and then I'm going to start getting a little more vague and that's totally okay. Remember, if you've got questions, Facebook group, learning to code, we're there to help. I'll add clarity in there if you need. Um, otherwise have at her.